Okay, y'all. Uh, first things first, I gotta say is that um, I've been uh, really been sucked into this so-called divisive conversation that's been going on in the YTBC as of late, and I really gotta get back to putting out quality content and present, you know, facts and information on fighters you never heard of before or you're not too fond of whatnot. And I thought of coming up with a new concept, which will be very, very, um, probably new to the YTBC. So uh, I'll uh, I'll be delivering that in the coming days. But first things first, I want to say that um, there's a clarification that needs to be made. Now, we all know the Canelo Alvarez vacated his WBC title to avoid his mandatory challenge to Gennady Golovkin. And yes, um, this is a very cowardly act. And yes, this is one of the most disgraceful disgraceful things that's ever been conducted in history of boxing. Yes, it's not the first as it have been done so. Okay, we all can recall how Riddick Bowe had threw the WBC title in the trash back in 1992 after he became that undisputed champion against Vendor Holyfield to avoid Lennox Lewis. So yes, in a situation like that, the WBC had awarded Lewis the title, which was not his fault. He did. He was the mandatory. They awarded him the title, but they, yet they forced him. They had mandated him to defend that title against the other mandatory. I don't recall who the fighter was. I think it was, um, was it Michael Dokes? I don't know. Well, actually, you know what? Both fought Dokes, but I'm not sure it was Dokes. I think it was Tony Tucker, one of those guys. I don't know. I have to check and see. But needless to say, that's what's... Um, What's currently what the WBC is going to do right now. I think more likely they did award Golovkin the title. Okay. It's not his fault. He is the mandatory challenger. He did. Yeah. So, yeah, you could say he <laughs> he is, you know, within his right to just, you know, be awarded the title. But needless to say, I'm not going to apologize about my opinion. I think he should just fight for the title and then capture it that way. But, of course, he will more likely have to defend it against Jorge Sebastian, which is which is the other mandatory for the um, middleweight title in the WBC, which I expect Golovkin to get through with no problem. But, you know, it may be a little bit competitive fight than Dominic Wade, but who knows? Now, shout out to Car Tito Garcia because he brought up a very good point in his video about this whole, you know, Canelo Alvarez and Kanadi Gol Golovkin fiasco. Um, Canelo Alvarez knows about Gennady Golovkin very well. Now, this is the reason why I know why he's avoiding this man. He doesn't want nothing to do with him. It all stems from the sparring, the sparring days a few years ago between both men. Now, according to a few reports, Gennady Golovkin always had the best of Canelo in sparring. He always bested him. It was to a point where uh, Canelo even got rocked in sparring and you know, he was hurt pretty badly from what the uh, reports have confirmed. And from those days on, Canelo Alvarez had never forgotten Gennady Golovkin's face. And he knew at some point at some time that he would eventually have to meet his destiny. He would have to face this man. But he knew that if he wanted to get, if he were to face this man, he had to get in disadvantage. So this is the reason why he came up with this imaginary weight class called the Canelo weight. Okay, which is between 154 and the actual 160 middleweight limit. Of course, if you're over the 154 limit, which is a light middleweight limit, you're technically a middleweight because it's still within the limits of 160, but not the actual weight, but it's still over 155. Okay, so he knows that he would, if he has a chance of beating Golovkin, he was going to have to disadvantage him, drain him, so that way he wouldn't have much power after rehydration or much speed or reflexes, whatnot. Okay, in fact, the Golovkin is getting up in age, so that's another factor as well. Okay, now, even though he vacated his WBC title, he is still the lineal title, lineal champion, which means he's still the middleweight champion, okay? In that particular situation, Canelo knows that there won't be no restrictions or prerequisites where he would have to face a certain fighter. So, Technically, he kind of pretty much comes out on top here because he knows he's the cash cow. He can get any fighter from 154 or even 147 to come up to fight him at 155. That's what he did to Mir Khan. Okay? Now, don't be surprised that September, a Pacquiao and Canelo fight is going to be announced. 
<laughs> and I know that you, the YTBC and the boxing community is going to be in an uproar about that. But I guarantee you this, Canelo knows that he don't give a damn what people think. He knows he's going to make his money. He knows Pacquiao's going to make his money. And that'd be the end of the day. And Golovkin will probably be pissed because he know, he's been calling out Pacquiao for that big fight. Right? And if he sees that this fight gets announced, he's going to be very, very upset. Even if he collects the WBO title for Billy Joe Saunders, if Billy Joe Saunders accepts the fight, upset, I mean, accepts it. Yes, Golovkin will be the undisputed champion, but he is not the recognized champion because the actual champion is Canelo Alvarez. Now, if he wants to be the recognized champion, he will have to go through Canelo, and Canelo knows that. And he, Canelo pretty much told Golovkin, he's like, look, I don't give a damn about the WBC title. I'm still the middleweight champion, the linear recognized champion. So if you want that big money fight, if you want to get paid, if you want that big name on the resume, which is me, you're going to have to come to my weight one way or the other. And you're going to have to take a lower split. So pretty much Canelo has got Golovkin in a trap. Okay. Even if Golovkin goes up against the other guys like Saunders, Jacobs, and eventually Eubank. Okay, fine. And they have a couple of defenses at, you know, at, two, you know, at middleweight. Great. But there's still one guy left to beat, and that's Canelo. And he's going to have to go down to 155 to beat Pato. That's plain and simple. That's the end of the story. Okay, he's going to have to fight Canelo one way or the other. And Canelo knew this, and this is the reason why he dropped the title the way he did. He's being very calculating here. And trust me, I'm not vouching for Canelo. What I'm saying is it is very calorie what he's doing. It's a fucked up situation. It's unbelievable that most some of his fans are still supporting him on this. Unbelievable. But yeah, now, if Triple G can't get the Canelo fight, if he can't get the fight with the other middleweights, as I mentioned, I want the man to be challenged, okay? Because, to be honest with you guys, I'm just upset that this guy has still got to fight opposition at this low quality, especially from the Dominic Wade fight. Of course, that's not his fault. Wade was his mandatory for the IBF. He had to either fight him or he was going to get stripped. I get that. But aside from all that, <laughs> it's just like his level of opposition is just not so upper launch quality, okay? Even though I have given him credit for some of those wins, yes. But still, though, and the reason why I'm still upset is that people just have this amnesia. It's like, the reason why I stated that the whole situation with the belt situation, him being awarded two belts um, and actually winning the belt, and still people want to propagate him and tarnish other guys like Marvin Hagler and Bernard Hawkins as if they weren't shit compared to Kalefkin's legacy. That's the reason why I stated what I stated. I knew that was coming, and yet people want to sweep that under the rug, okay? The fact is, yes, I heard the other guy, he knows what I'm talking about, saying that, oh, I'm a hater because I'm stating that. I'm trying to say that Triple G is the reason why Golovkin, I'm hating on Triple G. Is his fault that Canelo vacated his title? No, no. The problem is that some of you guys get upset when Triple G gets critiqued, okay? Bottom line. And I find that a bit of a double standard I'll get to in a second because of this man in front of your screen, which I will point the parallels. You get upset when someone critiques them, just like Floyd Mayweather fanatics. You guys are no different from them. OK, when we ask the man to be challenged, if he can't get certain fights, if there's no one there in this division that wants to fight him, what do you want him to do? Sit there and be a duck and say, you know what? I can claim my legacy as the most avoided fighter in history. Nobody wanted to fight me. There are no challenges. OK, yeah, but there were challenges that you could have captured. You could have did what Charlie Burley did, try to find, you know, challenges, even though most people didn't want to fight him. He still looked for challenges. He still moved up in weight to fight challenges. Yes, people still avoided him. Okay. So I don't understand this, the double standing here. Okay. It's like you guys want to go ahead and criticize other fighters for not taking certain challenges, which the one particular fighter, you know who I'm talking about. I'll get to him in a, later in this uh, presentation. But yet when there's certain fighters like Canelo who's ducking Triple G, you guys are all upset about that, rightfully so. You should be angry. But I didn't hear this type of outrage and uproar about Guillermo Rigging down when he was ducked by Leo Santa Cruz, particularly, and particularly Carl Frampton. Now, Carl Frampton vacated his belt not too long ago, a couple months ago, to avoid this man right here. Okay? Blatantly ducked him, moved up in weight. And the excuses that I heard from the other side who's upset about the Triple G. I'm sorry, about Golovkin being avoided by Canelo. They came out with all kind of excuses of giving Frampton a pass for doing what he did. They said, and you know the guy who I'm talking about, I'm going to, you know, he knows what I'm talking about. You, sir, said 
that Frampton had every right to avoid rigging down because rigging down had done nothing. It's his fault that the reason why he's not getting big fights, you know, he doesn't bring no money to the table. He's born. Okay, look, first things first, we all know he's not an excited fighter. I get that. Okay. But you neglect to mention that Grigging Dow, despite what he's going through and the way his title has been stripped from him, he is still the recognized and linear super bantamweight champion. He's still the top guy in that division. Okay. Frampton, Quig, Leo Santa Cruz, they were just alphabet belt champions. They weren't the man in that division. So if they wanted to become the man, they had to fight this man and they didn't want to do it. So they deliberately vacated their belts to avoid him. But you didn't criticize them for that. You gave them a pass. But when it comes to Golovkin, you want to turn around and say that it's an outrage. It's a travesty. Hmm. Unbelievable. But yet, when Rick Gendow got his WBA super title reinstated, you came on my page with a hateful comment saying, well, Rick Gendow didn't do nothing. He didn't deserve this to be reinstated and all that stuff. Now, if that's not hate, you tell me what is. Hmm. Now, if you want to go in and, and if you want to make another video blasting me for saying what I have to say about Triple G being put on a pedestal above Hopkins and Hagler, let me comment on that a bit further. You want to say that Hopkins' greatest claim to middleweight was fighting Trinidad and um, De La Hoya. Well, let me tell you something. When Hopkins had a a, um, a string of, of defenses as IBF champion, he fought formidable opponents that you never heard of, sir, or don't even know anything about. Okay, like Lupe Aquino. Glenn Johnson in his prime, John David Jackson, who was his mandatory, Antoine Eccles, Keith Holmes, Robert Allen. I could go on and on and on. OK, Simon Brown, which you probably don't even know. Those guys were more formidable than any of the guys that Golovkin has beat. That is a fact like you like to use the term facts. OK, so don't come on my channel and tell me that I'm hating just because I have a state and opinion of the obvious. All right. Now, moving on to this damn moving up the weight argument. I recall whenever I say or anybody else like Tito Garcia suggests that Golovkin moves up in weight and take on better challenges, it's not of hate. It's not a spite. It's me and Tito being rational boxing fans. He, like me, have been watching boxing for many years. We've seen all greats like Evander Holyfield, Carlos Serrates, the Wilfredo Gomez's, the Azuma Nelsons. They all moved up in weight. And Oscar De La Hoya, they all moved up in weight. And took challenges. They wanted to challenge themselves against bigger guys. Okay? But yet, when we ask Triple G to do the same thing, if the middleweight fighters don't want to fight him, you come up with all kinds of excuses saying, there's no point for him to move up in weight. There's no fights here for him. There's nobody for middleweight to fight. Uh, he could fight 154 guys. So, 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 wait a minute. So, you get on Canelo for fighting little guys, but yet, when you make a suggestion that Triple G could fight 154 guys coming up at 160, it's no problem. The fact that Golovkin actually called out this man, Floyd Mayweather, and Manny Pacquiao 154, but that was no problem. Okay. All right. I see how that works. But speaking of Floyd, and I'm the heart, one of his harshest critics. You guys know that. Okay. I recall when Floyd was a unified champion at 147 and 154, when Golovkin was calling this man out for over a year or two, you guys were taunting Floyd. You were harassing him. You were making countless videos telling him that he needed to move up and wait and fight Golovkin. Hell, I even suggested that he do the same thing since he said that Golovkin was easy work. Okay, fine. You guys were telling him to move up and wait and take on challenges. But yet, when we ask Gennady Golovkin to do the same thing, it's a problem. You get outraged. And yet, when people call him out, you get outraged. So, when we ask him to take on better challenges, it, you get outraged. I mean, I don't know, is it that you guys want this man to continue to have a padded resume or I don't know what it is. I, are you afraid that this man, are you want him to have the least risk, least risk as possible? Is that what it is? Because in, to my, in my, <laughs> to be honest with you, I think that's what Lochner's management are doing. They're trying to um, position him to get the much least risk as possible, make the much money as he can, and then call it a career. Okay, if that's what they want to, what, if that's what they want to do, so be it. But that's my opinion to assess if you want to disagree or agree with me fine but that's not hating that's just my opinion that's a fact and that's what's going on here okay so man this is tiresome it really is but all i know is this i see the hypocrisy here about rigging down when he got blatantly ducked 
There was hardly any outrage from the other side. You gave all those guys like Frantham an excuse. But that's all I got to say. I'm out.